This will be the first video in a series on pattern matching algorithms. The first algorithm we will look at is uh, the brute force method. Basically the brute force method is uh, enumerating every possible configuration of your inputs uh, and testing those until you get a correct answer. Just try everything in a nice orderly fashion until you get the right answer or until you've exhausted all of your inputs. So for the brute force pattern matching, a pattern string is compared to a text string to check if the text contains the pattern. So if you can control F or command F uh, in your browser and you try to find a word or whatever, that's what we're doing here. So um, the brute force method compares the first character in the pattern to each character in the text. If a match is not made, so if the first character in the pattern does not match the first character in the text, the pattern is moved forward one space along the text. Now we're going to be comparing first character in the pattern to second character in the text. If a match is found, then the pattern does not move and we compare the next character in the pattern to the next character in the text. So here's a little um, drawing. So we compare I against D, no match. I against O, no match, no match, no match, no match. There's a match, so instead of moving forward one space, we're gonna keep it where it is and just look at the next character in both the pattern and the text. Obviously the pattern's on the bottom and the full text is on the top. Bingo, we get a match. Um, our pattern is exhausted, but we have uh, a match for each character. So we're done. Um, here's a Java implementation. So this is called brute force, and our method is called is substring, and it accepts a string. It accepts the text string, and then the pattern is going to be input by the user. So we use the scanner object to assign um, the pattern to a string variable called pattern. Um, so it's going to prompt the user for that, and it's going to save it right here as pattern. And, I, and like I said, the text is here. So we're going to iterate through all of the text characters except for the last uh, pattern length plus one because if we have uh, I, say we have IT, so I is under H, T is under question mark. If that doesn't work, we don't have to put I under question mark because there's nothing for T to go under, so we know it's not going to match. If our word was match and it started over here, M-A-T-C-H, it wouldn't make any sense. So we don't have to check those because there's not enough to check against. So that's why we're only going that far along the text. And then we're going to have a nested loop here um, where we will iterate through the pattern. This is how I did it. Um, we're going to iterate through the pattern length sort of plus one. So less than or equal to the pattern length where we start at zero. If we wanted to just do IT, we would start at zero and we would go to less than pattern length because it starts at zero. But we're going IT and then an extra one and I'll show you why we're going an extra one iterating through the pattern. Because we say if j equals pattern length, return true. If we went through i, we went through t, and now we're at the extra one, bingo. That means that everything checked out, everything compared uh, correctly. We made matches, and then we return true. This returns a Boolean, which means it is a substring. And so alternatively, if the text... If the character at um, i in the text does not equal the pattern um, at j, or the character at j in the pattern, then we're going to break out of this inside loop. 
So this, this is where at the we're at say the first character of the text, and then we're gonna say if the first character of the pattern doesn't match, break out of this pattern loop. Uh, and then we'll be back into this text loop and we'll move one forward looking at the second character in the text. Suppose though it did match, we're at the first character in the text. It does match, we're not going to break, but we're going to check if we completed our full pattern and match. No, we didn't. So what we're going to do is uh, increment i and obviously the j is going to increment too. So that's how we're going to move the text forward one space and the i forward one space, which is what we did from here to here. And then at the end of all this, if we went through the whole thing up to, as if we slid the pattern along the text as far as we sort of have to to check everything, and we didn't return a match, we'll just return false. So it's a little Java implementation that'll work if you want to test it out. So let's look at the running time. Consider a pattern like AAAB and a text like a bunch of A's. This will produce the worst case running time. The text has N characters. Let's say the text has N characters, this, and the pattern has M characters. So the pattern AAAB has M characters. In the worst case, we will compare m pattern characters with n minus m minus 1 text characters. So like we said before, we're going to compare m pattern characters. So it has m characters. So it checks out a. Well, that works. Let's check the next one. Another a. Another a. Ooh, b. That didn't work. So we've checked every character in the pattern and then found out that it didn't match so now we have to step forward one in the text a that works a that works a that works b doesn't work uh oh so we step forward so for every single text character we're looking at every single pa pattern character minus the fact that if we're this is for long we stop at a a a b we would stop if it was a here a, A, B, because we know that it's not going to match once once we've exceeded the bounds of this text. There's no A, A, nothing, nothing. It's never going to work. So that's why we subtract the N, M minus 1. Uh, right, that's what we did here. Except we, we called it minus pattern length plus 1. Uh, it's the same thing. Um, uh, pattern length minus 1 in brackets. It's the same math. Um, so that's how we did that. So therefore, the running time is order m for every character in the pattern times. These are all the characters in the text that we'll have to compare it to. And then this can be simplified to m times n. Uh, so for each character in the text, we compare it to each character in the pattern. So that's the brute force. Uh, method for pattern matching. We're going to see two more algorithms on pattern matching that are much more efficient than this one.